In this week's episode, is a luxury German coupe from the 1980s a sound used by? And we help a viewer choose a suitable vehicle for occasional dirt road driving. And we find out if an Audi S8 is a sensible upgrade from a Volkswagen Amarok. Hello and welcome to Buyer's Guide, the show that is dedicated to providing you with invaluable guidance when it comes to buying, selling or maintaining a vehicle. Joining us in studio this week to help answer some of those tricky automotive questions are Fazana Shamu from Redline Motoring and Pokise Dipakwane from Pokiso Electronics. How's it guys? Hi. Good, thanks. Good to have you back in studio with us again. Thanks for having us. Okay. Mm-hmm. Nice to have you all here guys. If you have a question for the team, you can send it to Buyer's Guide at ignitiontv.co.za or you can pop us a DM on Instagram at ignitiontv. And please give us as much information as possible including a pretty picture of yourself. All right, guys, let's just get into our first question. It comes from Mark, a 43-year-old with a budget of 150,000 Rand. He's always loved a mid-1980s Mercedes-Benz SEC. Wow, my car. Since he was young and is now considering buying himself the vehicle. On the other hand, he's considering saving up the money to buy a more modern vehicle in a few years' time, like a Cherry Tigo, once they come down to the 200,000 Rand mark. What would we recommend? Ladies first. For me, this is, um, it's a bit tricky. So I don't know a lot about that model, firstly, right? It's before awesome car, born, awesome yeah. two-door. <laughs> <laughs> yes, before you were born, exactly. But also, he doesn't, is it, he just wants to keep it, is he going to use, because this is, the two models is like chalk and cheese. Yes. Um, and then also, he's, n- he m- the, the Mark he'll, he'll buy now, but then the Cherry he'll wait for a few years. So I'm, I'm struggling to understand his reasoning there. But he can find a 1984 mark for 190,000 with um, 100,000 kilometers on it. And then Cherry Tigo, he's, I don't know, he'll have to wait for a while. But see, that's it. We don't know what he wants it for. He, so wants, I don't uh, know what he wants, this is like a collector's piece. Yeah. Uh, but the Cherry Tigo is not a collector's collect, piece. It's not a collector's piece. It's and it'll, it'll, in time, will appreciate. Yeah. Well, that's what I would do if I had that kind of money. I, I, I wouldn't spend 150K if I didn't know mm. the car and what could go wrong with the car. Because if anything goes wrong on a 380 SEC, mm. it's definitely going to start costing you money. Yeah. Okay, so, so what, do you, what, what do you think? Oh, well, look, um, I, I, I was also stuck a bit, mm. not knowing whether he, does he wanted to use it for weekends, because for me, this is a classic. And anything from the 1980s, we know that it's going to break. And this particular model, if it breaks, you're going to have problems. So there's still a bit of information that is a bit missing. But I would say, um, look, for a 1980s, if you're going to use it for a weekend, Sundays, uh, just relax and go on the highway and feel a bit of the wind. Breakfast run. Breakfast runs <laughs> and enjoy the, the vehicle. I would say, okay, go ahead. Because, yes, it will appreciate in time. Uh, but it's not an, a cheap car to maintain. That's what I would say for, for that. I, I think but what um, Mark must understand here on this is that, unfortunately, I mean, it was a great car in its day. And mm-hmm. those are the days when Mercedes built cars. You know, they knew how to build cars properly. The problem is now, parts are so expensive for them and so difficult to find. If you're uh, uh, mechanically minded and you want to fix it yourself, fair enough, go and buy something. But from the sound of your, your mail here, It's like you you want that like as your daily driver kind of thing. Mm. We would certainly not recommend that. It's fine if you like somebody who understands what you're getting into and you're going to buy yourself a second-hand car like that and you're going to use it once in a while and, you know, go to the Piston Ring Club or one of these classic car days, park the car there, there and back. But understand, these cars are horrendously expensive for parts, you know. For sure. Um, Because... Of the 80s Mercedes, if you do find them, you've got to get them from Mercedes. There's very little in terms of aftermarket stuff. I mean, 150,000 Rand budget, you'll find something, but you're going to spend a fortune on keeping it going. It's the kind of thing that you, you don't want to do more than 500 Ks a month in the car. Yeah. So if you're thinking of buying it for like a daily runaround, don't even think about it because you're going to have to, you know, buy um, a Shell petrol station just to because they're heavy on <laughs> juice. <laughs> yeah, but you know, Adam. I wouldn't I would recommend it uh, unless, of course, it's like, you know, a collector's car for yourself. If it's at 150K, he's not going to buy a piece of crap. He's definitely not. It's going to be in pretty good nick. If it isn't, then you don't spend the 150K. But do you know the, the automatic gearboxes on those co- particular... Uh, yes, models? I know them. I've repaired yeah, them. They're not expensive. bad. They, they're not bad at all because they're still the older 
yeah. automatic gearboxes. They're not the new ones yeah. with all this mechatronics. But, I mean, it's not, only, it's not only the automatic gearbox. There's so many There's So many other things. that can, and It's got that uh, suspension but that can get expensive with those bellows in the back yes. and things like that. But yes. simple little things like body parts and stuff are yeah. very difficult. So understand what you're getting into. I certainly wouldn't recommend it unless you understand exactly what you're going in for. I'd rather take the 150,000 rand and go and buy yourself a run-of-the-mill run car that you can get parts for. Anyway, we're going to move on. Hugo is in the market for a retirement vehicle for his mom, preferably a hatchback with sufficient ground clearance. The vehicle will be used during the weekend for trips to the village. So he has a budget of 170 to 250,000 rand, and they're open to any suggestions. So, Fazana, 150, 170, 250,000 rand. Where so would you go? I got a few options, but I didn't pull out hatchbacks. I was like, okay, because of the ground clearance, let's look towards crossovers. Yes. So on my list here, I have the Suzuki Espresso, Renault Triber, the Renault Kiga, 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 uh, Toyota Starlet, and the Bike X25. And that's all well for brand new 2023 models, well within his budget. Yep. Okay, so I, I would say, um, you know, uh, the Starlight makes sense, mm. uh, especially from um, a weekender and also for maintenance and value uh, because it's a Toyota and it's for it's a, a mom. It's a Suzuki. <laughs> it's not a Toyota. It has a Toyota badge. It's a <laughs> Suzuki. When you guys get okay. your glasses. <laughs> okay. Suzuki. Yeah. But I mean, from a maintenance point of view and also to have the vehicle to run longer because it's for a retired person, retired retirement budget also. Um, and looking at, um, you know, keeping the car longer, it's, it's, it's going to be um, a very, very good car to keep there. Um, another vehicle budget car, uh, I would say a used Jimny if you're going to go to rural areas to yeah. That will be a perfect vehicle to use. But for his mom, uh, Jimny and a uh, mom, I yeah. But mom is yeah. retired. I'm with you, Fazana. Jimny is yeah. a great car. Yeah. But I, I but think if you're gonna take it to Venda, you're gonna need some good ground but There's so many others to choose from. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen to my list. I've yes, got a nice right. long list here. So in this sort of budget, there's there's a lot of good cars. Why not stay away from turbocharged cars? Mm -hmm. Because turbocharged cars, you know. Somebody who's Efficiency a, a pensioner or, or retiree is not bothered about performance. You want bulletproof reliability. reliability. If you're going on, um, you know, out into the countryside kind of thing, you want somebody that's not going to break down. Hyundai Venue, great little car you mm. can get. You can get a little 1.6, 1.4, really good car. Honda WRV, little 1.2 liter engine. It's got the right clearance, very reliable, not the most powerful, but for this application, somebody's not looking for a rocket. Then you've got the, the Toyota Urban Cruiser, mm. or the, you're going to tell me that's a Suzuki? <laughs> yes, it is a Suzuki Vitara. Yeah. Or, or the Suzuki yes. equivalent. So that'll give you the, the right heart clearance. It's a little 1.5 liter, very reliable. But and what about the, the, the insurance on the Toyota? Well, that's another issue to look at in terms of insurance. And then you've got the Suzuki because Ignis. They, they use them as taxis in the locations, that particular model. Oh, really, do they? Yeah. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Well, so that's something new. So <laughs> you're not thinking about the uh, the Ertiga? No. Yeah. No. So then, of course, you've got the Suzuki Ignis, Ignis as well, which is a small little car that has has uh, more than enough ground clearance. All simple, easy, very good, very reliable cars to go for. Low fuel efficiency, easy to drive, definitely the kind of thing. I, I see you in for more modern than older. Yeah. Because she's retiring and all that. But I would still consider a slightly older RAV4 for her. It's also a great option. It's a good option. Yeah. In that definitely consider slightly older yeah. in that in that uh, yeah. price, price bracket. Mm. Price 250 grand. 250 grand, yeah. Buys your high mileage. Buy your high mileage, nice. mile, but you know, or a um, Mitsubishi, is it Mitsubishi, ASX. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's another one, but the, the problem you know. with those ones is you're going to get something with 150, 200,000 kilometers. I'd rather go for yeah, something with uh, a... Well, the Toyota RAV4, if it's got half a million kilometers on it, it's <laughs> only just running. Yeah. So, you know, I'd put it in something like that. Okay, so we're going to okay. move on to the next question. Stay so tuned, because after the break, SUVs from Germany, France, and Japan go head to head. And we choose a vehicle that's suited to occasional dirt road driving under the 350,000 Rand mark. Welcome back to Bias Guard. Our next question comes from CISO, who hails from the Free State, and he's in search of a compact SUV. He has a budget of 340,000 Rand, excluding insurance, and he's considering the following options. 2020 or 21 Opel Grandland X, Opel Mokka, Peugeot 3008, Suzuki Grand Vittoria, 
Suzuki Franx and the VW T-Roc, which is the best buy in terms of space, running costs, features, fuel efficiency, and he wants decent performance. Now, Fasana, hmm. I know you're a performance guru. <laughs> you want something, nothing less than 110 kilowatts. So that's none of those cars. Yeah. <laughs> for me, I was thinking, these are good options, but for me, I was thinking, go with the newest in Suzuki Franx. Brand new, don't have to worry about service, maintenance. And But now I'm seeing also the power is very low on the Suzuki Yeah, Franx. it's only yeah. about 85 yeah, kilowatts. 85. Yeah, yeah. 77. Like 77. From its 1.5 litre. Yeah, yeah, so it's not the most powerful so car. No. So this is the problem. <coughs> it's 350,000 rands, a reasonable budget. Mm -hmm. But if you want something with a bit of performance, I would, you know, I would go with something like a Suzuki Franks because you're going to get everything you're going to wa want in it within your budget, and you're going to have um, a really nice car. Mm. The other options are things like which he hasn't listed here. Yeah, would be the uh, Haval Jolion yeah. and the, the Cherry Tigo Four. What do you think, Professor? Well, look from the list, I will go for the T Rock. Um, I think. I struggle with uh, with Opel and uh, Peugeot cars in terms of dealer network. You know, yeah. dealer uh, network service maintenance yeah, parts. service maintenance kind of parts. It's it, it can come a bit tedious. Uh, from the list, I would go for the T Rock. Uh, I think it's uh, sp space wise, comparing it with the other vehicles, uh, don't not really sure about the Mog, but I think it's it's a perfect car to go onto the list. Yeah, what you know, the modern car, even though it may have seventy seven or eighty five kilowatts, mm -hmm. they really perform. Optimally, mm. yeah. They're not like the older cars, like uh, maybe a uh, what you say, Toyota Whatever. Tan, yeah. 66 kilowatts, and it travels like a 66 kilowatt car. <laughs> yeah. You know, like it, if you put it in R, you probably go faster. <laughs> but uh, the modern car, he yeah. needs to remember. Yeah. He, yeah. he may not. It may not say 110 kilowatts, yeah. but the performance will be there. Mm. So for me, if he's looking at these cars, it would be the Suzuki Franx. What Pochisa said as well is quite correct in terms of things like the Peugeot, Opel future resale value, mm. parts yes. availability, things like that. I mean, the network. Yeah, yeah they're, they're not bad cars, but I mean, like the, the Opel, I find Opel parts ridiculously expensive, very difficult to find. There's no generic yeah. parts for it. Where for, the, for his budget of 340, you can buy yourself a brand new Cherry Tigo. You can buy yourself a brand new Haval Jolion. You're going to get more space than those other cars get off you. Um, you're going to buy a brand new or maybe one that's a couple of months old. They come with good warranties. Mm. There's a lot of them on the road now. They're very, very good value for money. The Suzuki Franx is also a really good car and it'll fit in that sort of price range. But if you want a bit more performance, I would recommend go and drive the Suzuki Franx and go and drive the Cherry and Haval. They're both really good cars, I believe, and make your choice from there. The others, uh, I would discard the others and I would just they look at those three that I've mentioned. You know, in saying that, right, in discarding the others, I'd like him to look at the Peugeot 388. Hmm. It's a very, very nice car. But when it gets but older From a design it, point of view, it's yeah. a very but nice car. It has all the extra When it gets older on in life, like that. and it starts to You know break. what, he can sell it and buy another one. <laughs> oh, then you yeah, can sell it. You can sell it and move on to something yeah. else. Okay. But otherwise, he shouldn't just discard it. 35-year-old Chopin hails from Bloemfontein and currently drives a fully paid 2018 Hyundai i20. She wants to upgrade into an SUV and she has the following options in mind. A 2016 Mazda CX-3 2.0-litre dynamic, a 2011 BMW X1 S-Drive 2.0-litre diesel and a 2018 Hyundai Creta 1.6. The vehicle will be used for the daily commute and occasional dirt road driving. She can spend up to 350,000 rand. I know I'm going to spend my 350,000 rand. It sounds like everybody's got the same budget looking for the same car. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so what do you think there? Well, look, I got my money on the BMW. Um, the diesel engines are the perfect engines uh, from BMW to, to drive. And these it's cheaper to maintain, actually, these engines. And you can drive this until to 500,000 Ks. I mean, um, maintenance, uh, parts availability, even generic generic parts are available. I mean, the, the only thing I found on the German cars is you got to follow their maintenance schedule. Well, look, yeah. if, I mean, like it's a the Japanese cars, I can drive my Toyota 95,000 kilometers. Mm -hmm. Oh, I forgot to change the oil at... Uh, no. Uh, and they'll laugh. Oil, oil will lose viscosity. I That's know, I understand. But Toyota's the Toyota... BMW. No, Toyota's last. Eh? No, I mean... I mean BMW must be serviced on time as per manufacturer's spec. Yeah. At, at, at twin, uh, um, I mean... Uh, Basically, a two-liter diesel is a uh, five-liter. I agree with five you. Five W thirty. It's, it's a, a good, good model. No, no, I vehicle. agree with you, sir. And it's excellent option for that one. It's an excellent option. I agree with you. I'm just saying, 
Yeah. If you someone like me who likes to forget things <laughs> regularly, okay. I can't even remember. His <laughs> I can't even remember my name. Yeah. So no, no, I, it's just an option because I'm not mm -hmm. saying that it uh, it's uh, to write it off. Yeah. I understand why you'd say that, and, and you're quite right in saying the two liter diesel is a is the best engine mm. I think BMW have in their lineup right now. What do you now. think, Fazana? What do you think, Fazana? So. I did a search for Bluefin Tain specifically, specifically, right? It's it in the middle uh, of the freestyle. That's where it is. <laughs> <laughs> you, don't have to, you have to search for it. It's very easy to find. No, I meant in terms of uh, cars Car available, available to yeah. her. Because a lot of our available, it's like Joba cars, yeah. Durban cars. So I just wanted to see what's there. I couldn't find any BMWs in that spec available in Bloomfield. Because the only bar Hilux is there in Bloomfield anyway. <laughs> and then also, um, the Creta is in her budget, but for me, she, she had listed a um, 2016 Mazda. CX-3, yeah. Yeah, but on I, as an alternate option, a 2019 Mazda CX-5. Yeah. Yeah, that would be my choice. I, for me, I would definitely yeah. go with the Mazda, and I'll tell you why. 2011 X1, although it's, it's, it's not a bad car, you're talking about a 12-year-old car, mm. Mm. it's dated now. The early versions of the X1, it was it's ugly. <laughs> I mean, let's face it, it's <laughs> ugly. The inside of it is boring. It must probably be very badly worn because those cars just did, didn't wear well. Yes, where it's damn fugly. Where you can get a 2016 CX-3 or also like your idea of a CX-5. CX mm -hmm. In yeah. that budget of 350,000 rand, you'll get a CX-5, yeah. slightly bigger, a two liter. It will be modern inside, really well put together, mm. ultra reliable. Maintenance free, Pohisa. <laughs> cheap maintenance, maintenance free. free. No way. You know the turbos <laughs> on these vehicles. <laughs> there's no turbo on that. Yeah. Just normally aspirated. Oh, the, the, the two liter. Yeah. And then the Hyundai Crete is also a really good car. Yeah. Um, I would rather go for something newer with less mileage. Yeah, than for that. sure. So that's my decision. Take my advice. Don't listen. Uh, unfortunately, I have to advice. agree with Adam. Take the beer. Take, take his advice and take remember, I'll also. You won't cry. Yeah, well, <laughs> those are the options. You see, this is why we have other people come in with different opinions. But I, I, you know, the thing also about the BMW on the Free State, you're driving around with run flat tires, don't have a spare wheel, go for the Mazda. Or go, go for the go Mazda, for the always. Mm -hmm. Anyway, go for the Mazda. that was the debate. You make your choice. Drive them all and make a choice. But uh, all three are actually reasonable cars. All right, we're going to be taking a short break. When we get back, we examine the long-term ownership prospects of a 2013 BMW 320i. And we consider whether an Audi S8 would make a suitable upgrade for a VW Amarok. Welcome back to Buyer's Guide. Tommy hails from Peter Marisburg and is the owner of a fully paid 2013 BMW 320i with 220,000 kilometers on the clock. He's had the engine timing chain kit done, oil and water pump done, and thermostat replaced. Who would like to know how reliable <laughs> the car will be <laughs> in the next few years and if there are any foreseeable expensive maintenance issues? Well, he just I'm so sorry, it. Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry to laugh at you like that, but <laughs> Pohiso. Hey, Mr. Well, BMW, tell us. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, this is a disclaimer, right? <laughs> the N20s are not reliable engines. I'm sorry. Um, sell this thing let it go i think a bit i mean at 220,000 k's he has but he just spent 60k on that that's about how much he's never gonna get it back how this did he even get that far in that engine yes <laughs> <laughs> this 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 vehicle i call it uh use and enjoy he has used it and he has enjoyed it let it go it's yeah. time for it to go uh because the next thing that's gonna go uh, uh it's crank failure you're gonna get here. Yes. Uh, you're gonna get bearing failure. Because his, uh, because his oil pump failed. But he says he's damage replaced Damage has been done, yes. Yeah, but the damage, damage has already been, been, been done, yeah, done. Yeah, yes. The, the crank, uh, the bearings has already taken a bit of wear because I, I don't see why would he change the pump without, you know, the engine light, I mean the oil light, oil light having come on. That's yeah. probably what happened is, as we all know, the timing chains on those vehicles, they have two the chains, engine. one that yes. drives the camshafts, and one, the bottom one, one drives the oil pump. The, yes. And some workshops, they'll change the, the, the chain for the oil pump and say, oh, you need a new oil pump, yeah. and maybe you don't because the chain just broke, and maybe that's why the I, I think But also get trouble, the oil pumps. The N20 engines, when you, when, when, once you get 200,000 Ks, just do all, everything. Can you if get 200,000 Ks in there? <laughs> yeah. You can get 200,000, <laughs> yes, you can. With much difficulty. <laughs> no. <laughs> so so here's, a, here's a tip for anybody who drives around in a BMW 320i. 
We all know one of the common problems is the timing chains. And I honestly believe one of the main causes for that, besides the poor design, stop -start. is stop-start technology on them. Yes. Because it works on oil pressure. So it's the minute you switch the car off at the traffic lights or the stop-start technology, your oil pump stops delivering oil pressure, your timing chain becomes loose. Like a bicycle, then it jerks every time it starts. And eventually you're doing that you know, a couple of hundred times, eventually the chain breaks or fails. So anybody, if you've got a stop-start technology in your car, switch it off because uh, that's the worst designed garbage that anybody ever put on a car is stop-start technology. And it doesn't save any fuel. No, no, it does. It I saves like 0 0.03% <laughs> of fuel and it stops putting Thanks, Adam. Fuel. Fuel. But I, th I think another thing, Adam, is um, you know how uh, the prolong of the the service interval, it's, yes. it's, it's too high for 20,000 kilometers. Or it's service, 20 or 30. service your 20, car 20, every 10,000 kilometers. Every 10,000 k. After 100,000, every 10,000 k is just service. Even before that. But the dealers won't do that because under motor plan. And they tell you, yeah. no, why do they give you 25,000 kilometer service intervals? So they can give you three services. If they did it every 10,000, they have to give you 10. Mm. So yeah. we know. Anyway, so as Pokisa says, Sell it. Move on. <laughs> Buy a Japanese car. All right. Our last question comes from Navin, who is wondering what the resale value of his 2015 VW Amarok 4.2 Highline with 90,000 kilometers on clock will be. He's worried that dealers might just be ripping him off. He's considering upgrading to a 2015 Audi S8, or S8 with 14,000 k's on the clock. The vehicle has a maintenance plan up until 100,000 kilometers. Would this be a good Upgrade. It won't be any grade. Zana, <laughs> what do you think? Buy a, a do you, would you ch change your Amarok for an S8? But don't forget, it's only got 14,000 kilometers, hey? Yeah. Hmm. Ooh. So it's almost new. Almost new. Almost new. I don't know. His fuel consumption on there is 8.8 to 14.2. 8.8 on highway, 14.2 in the city. Okay, for VW so Amarok. He's asking what's the fuel consumption. Yeah. On his uh, Audi A on S8. S8 yeah. That's lies. More like 20. Yeah, these are the yeah, OEMs driving. old this every yeah. This is more like 20 liters, 20 eh? Urban driving. Urban yeah. driving, that S8. Yeah. So 4.2 liter V8. He asked, V8. He asked what his Amarok is worth as well because he's worried about getting mm -hmm. ripped off. So the Amarok is worth about 250 to 280,000 Rand. That's really what it's worth. Yeah. Would we recommend somebody buy an S8? They say it's got a 100,000 kilometer maintenance plan. It's a 2015 model. M it means it's expired. It would have expired yeah. unless they've extended, extended it. Extended, yeah. Unless they've extended, and they may have extended to 100,000 kilometers or two years. So mm -hmm. in the next, you've got to look at that in terms of years. Mm -hmm. So maybe they say two years, 100,000 kilometers, and you think, well, that's cool. But what do you do after those two years? Because that car is going to be worth Zero. nothing. How many S8s? When last did you see an S8 on, I don't on the road? Know. I will not buy a 2015 model vehicle mm -hmm. with 14,000 kilometers on the clock. Because it's been parked eight wasn't? years. It's done 14,000 no. kilometers. Mm. No. First, right there, <laughs> I'm suspicious. <laughs> right there. Wrong. Right there, it's, oh, okay, guys. But he's, Let's have a re-look at this. He comes from KZN, where you used to go and turn mileage back on cars. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have to let everybody know? <laughs> hey? Yeah, so I, I don't know. You guys, would, would you recommend somebody buy an S8? No. No. I, I wouldn't. Um, there's a lot of things that doesn't make sense. I mean, 14,000 K is, is since 2015 until now. Uh, something is not Maybe it not is right one of those well. unicorn cars. Maybe it, it is a unicorn. It's yeah. a unicorn car, but you know where that horn's going to go when he buys this car. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. Right there. We would mm -hmm. not recommend you buy something like that. If mm -hmm. you have bought it now, we're, we're sorry. The, the problem is the parts on those cars are only available from dealers, which is fine because you've got a 100,000 warranty, but the dealers won't even keep stock of it. They'd have to order in from the manufacturer. It'll most probably every time it goes in for service needs to sit for a couple of days while they find parts for it. If you have any issues with it and there's no dealer near you, you've got big problems. If you want to sell this car later on in the life, so let's say two, three years down the, down the road, whatever you paid for it now, it's worth 10%. That's what Not even. You're going to have to pay someone to take it off your hands. Unless you find some, you know, other victim who, who's going to take <laughs> it. It's, it's not. There's so many other cars to choose from. I know it must probably looks like a cool car. There's no backup for it. Even, even if you took it to Audi, I don't think even the technicians at Audi would have experience with that vehicle because there's probably only 10 of them in the country. Mm. 10, I think more like three. I think yeah. maybe uh, if you want to make money, take it, go sell it to the guys on the highway. Yeah. Uh, you know those guys on the highway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sell it to them, yeah.
<laughs> Those guys on the highway, right? <laughs> okay, let's. Uh, All right, and on. with that, we've come to the end of this week's show. Thank you for Zana and Pukhisa for joining us and all the helpful advice, except on that uh, Beamer. <laughs> I'm a bit uh, worried about <laughs> you there. Eh? I'm very worried about you. Okay, until next time, please buckle up and stay safe on the roads.